All right, folks, how you doing? So welcome back to another reaction to psychology in Seattle. Love is blind. By the way, love is never blind, but anyway. Observing listeners. I feel like I have to really enunciate that because the the voice to text recognition closed caption thing on YouTube almost never gets it right. So unless I say it very slowly, it <laughs> yeah. YouTube subtitles or something else sometimes they really are. It'll be either, hey, German listeners or, hey, disturbing listeners. Every day you've done exactly what I would want in a wife. All right. Oh, that's fat, Jimmy. It's just a little bit. It's a little bit babble, basically. No, he, he's letting her go. And he's just saying, no, I can't go with all I can't. You see, I can kind of see now why people don't like Jimmy, because he should have just been straight with her and just said, listen, I'm not going to marry you. Like, but he's thinking about social media. And he's thinking about the cameras. He doesn't want to get killed on social media, basically. Was he a little bit cowardly? You could make that argument, but at the same time, you've got the fucking cameras on you. Yeah, you're in front of the world. I mean, what was he really meant to do? Jimmy is trapped, no matter what he does, because he's stuck with this neurotic narcissist who he does not want to fucking marry. But at the same time, he can't be a, a prick about it because he's going to get killed if he is, you know, because that is the age that we live in. We live in a very social media opinion based age but it's a it's a hard place for him to be in to be honest but maybe he could have handled it better in all honesty i love you to death and i, I want no, it doesn't it doesn't look right death. he's wanting to get rid of her from the fucking start you couldn't be arse bear this whole time he's just like the whole time he's been thinking you can see it in his eyes everyone can see this this is why nobody really likes him because you can see it behind the eyes he's like how the fuck are, how do i get rid of it how do, how do i get out of this Ugh, you know, that's not easy. It's not easy. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't want to be in this position, to be honest. But I want a relationship with you, and I want it doesn't no us to work so bad. Mm -hmm. This is all just letting. Well, really, what it is is he's just trying to let her down gently. Because if you listen to his tone and the way he's saying it, it's obvious that he's not going to fucking marry her. It's really fucking obvious that he's not going to marry her. He just wants out of this. You know, with the least amount of damage to his reputation as possible. He just wants to extricate himself from the situation as harmlessly as possible. You know, and that's what it is. But I don't want to go to the altar. I can't. Wow. What? I was not surprised, though. Everyone can see it. Most of the audience, 95% of the audience could see that he was never going to marry her. But again, Dr. Kirk is the empath. Got the blinders on a little bit. The most, I, I feel like empaths are on optimist mode 24 hours a day. They are the most optimistic people and, by extension, the most naive people alive sometimes. They really are. It's like because they're so in their emotions and their feelings and they don't see fucking reality and they cannot read between the lines to save their fucking lives. It's frustrating sometimes. <laughs> you, you all must have been watching me watch this and think oh kirk it's coming yeah yeah wow well jimmy I, I, please let me know in the comment was that a surprise to you it wasn't a surprise to me i could see it a thousand miles away fucking hell with that why <sighs> huh why do it on well so who knows well well why did he do it okay when they went to the theme park okay because that way he gave her one last happy memory they had a nice old day out they went on the roller coaster endorphins are high and all the rest of it you know why did he do it like that because he wanted to end things on a high note jimmy is a normal he's not a bad person you could argue maybe a little bit cowardly maybe he should have let her down more gently but at the same time really i mean you know the cameras are on him is social media is watching the world is watching jimmy was trapped he really was you know he's trapped in this horrible position of being with this narcissist that he has to get rid of there's no easy way to do it you know and not get slaughtered for it just bear that in mind they're told that they're supposed to do it on camera right so Oh, well, of course, you're on a TV show, mate. I mean, come on, are you paying attention? That, but I suspect that a lot will do it off camera. I well, no, the producers wouldn't allow that. You have to do it on camera because you're on TV. You're on a TV show. 
think I talked about how my contact on the show, or maybe I heard somewhere else, it's all speculation that Kenneth and Brittany had already had that conversation off. Kenneth was gay. It's that simple. Kenneth was absolutely gay. And again, like my last video, oh, nothing against gay people. Fair enough. You have we all have our preferences. But I don't know why the hell he was on the show in the first place. Because he had this beautiful mid twenties stunning girl throwing herself at him and he just like stonewalled her. It's obvious. It's obvious that Kenneth was gay. I mean, there's no other explanation for it, really. <laughs> you know, if, I mean uh, any of us, if we had a Brittany throwing themselves, throwing herself at us, well, bloody hell, I'm the luckiest man alive, unless you're gay. <laughs> and he obviously is. But nothing against them. But be honest about it. Don't mislead people. Camera, and then they recreated it on camera or something like that. Uh, it did kind of look that way. Anyway, yeah. so <laughs> it's not uncommon that people have those conversations off camera. And then like after the Battle of Stalingrad, when the two wings of the red army joined up they had to recreate it on film yeah recreate him so maybe he, it just occurred to him it doesn't look like it just occurred to him no it didn't <laughs> jimmy has been planning this for a long time he wants out but to spend all day together and then to ask her to kind of bait her hang her out to dry she you know she wasn't giving a a, you know, a very enthusiastic endorsement of their relationship, but she basically said, yeah, I'm in it. I'm, I'm in it to win it with some asterisks, you know, with some worries, some concerns. And then for you to come out later and, and, and just say, not only am I a no, but I don't, well, maybe he's saying he wants to date. No, no, no. He wants whatever. Uh, uh, so there's... Plus, Jimmy, well, I haven't said that. I mean, Jimmy's a normal, right? So he does have some degree of emotional empathy for her. I think part of her, part of him does feel sorry for her a wee bit. I feel sorry for Chelsea, to be honest. I see through it, and I still feel sorry for her. I really do. I mean, because it's not totally her fault. You know, uh, she is a victim of trauma who becomes a victimizer. You know, that is what a narcissist is. I think Jimmy, at some level, does genuinely like her. And does genuinely have some affection for her, but he's, he's not in love with her. He's never going to fucking marry her. It's no harm, you know, because he, he's been through so much shit with her. I wouldn't fucking marry her either, to be honest. But, you know, I think a part of him does kind of sympathize, you know, but who knows? I mean, I'm not a psychologist. There's that. And he's doing it on camera. Yeah. Yeah. And I think. Good night. She might yep. have some kind of relational trauma regarding humiliation as well. You know, when Mackenzie called and says, your man is out. And why? I wonder if that really happened, by the way. <laughs> because the thing with narcissists is their distortion field is so strong sometimes that you never really know something, what, how much they have made up and how much actually happened. Probably did, I don't know. Why aren't you with him? And it, that seemed to really be a big trigger for her. She even talked about that during the fight. You know, the way she was talking, she was totally fine staying home. She was cozy. She was tired. And then she gets this call. So, no, I saw the pish. No. Uh, no, I wouldn't believe that. So, could this be a version of the humiliation since it's, since it's on camera? But yeah, that's interesting. He says he can't even go to the altar. And I'm really glad that a lot of the couples are saying these kind of things before they get to the altar because it just seems so cruel to go to the altar and reveal it you know like bartice nancy seemed bartice was never man no bartice was never going to marry nancy it's never happened bartice no bartice is a uh what you call a player right he was never going to marry it's absolutely not happening should he have broke up with her before the altar well, yeah, but then again, maybe the terms and conditions are you have to go to the altar back then. Maybe they've changed it since then. You never know these things. Completely convinced, particularly because Bartice sends this letter or gift or something during the day that says... Bartice is a politician. I mean, if you think Jimmy is a bad guy, Bartice is infinitely worse. Because Bartice strung Nancy along. And to an extent, you could argue, I guess, that Jimmy did as well. But not really, because Chelsea has known the whole time that he was never going to go through with it. I mean, as much as he put on a little bit of an act, Jimmy, that is, not really. 
it was pretty obvious that Jimmy was never going to do it. But, you know, Bartice, it was the opposite. He was putting on such a good front, such a good act, that Nancy really did fall for it. And my heart kind of goes out to her a little bit, to be honest, because, you know, he did trick her and he did fool her. He never tricked anybody else. Nobody watching the show thought that was going to happen. But, you know, uh, you know, Bartice is the consummate politician. Jimmy is not. I wonder, is Bartisa an arse? He might be. I don't know. Um, I don't think so. I just think he was a very good player, as it were. Let's do this. I think that's what he said, and it's not a direct... No, I mean, if you want to compare models, Jimmy is streets ahead of Bartis because Jimmy, I think at some level, did genuinely give her a chance. But in the back of his head, he was always like, no. I, just how do I get out of this? You know what I mean? I, th I think he did kind of, at some level, want to give her a chance, but it's just such a neurotic, nye, 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 nye. you know, Chelsea. It's just constant, constant, constant negativity. Just, you know, it's just, no. After two or three fights, he's just like, just how do I get out of this? Wrecked <laughs> indication of him saying yes, but you know, given all, all the other things he was saying. So you want to, I think the compassionate thing is to, as soon as you know that you're a, a no, that you don't wait for the altar anyway. And the thing is, Jimmy did not wait for the altar, by the way, unlike Bartiste or unlike Clay or a lot of the folk on this show, Jimmy, to his credit, did not wait for the altar. He said to her, I'm not, listen, I'm not going to, drag you in front of the altar and just embarrass you in front of the world because that would be shite you know i'm not gonna i'm not gonna put you up there and say no you know that does have to go in his favor but to his credit jimmy did not embarrass her in front of the world by taking her to the altar and saying no he said no before that he drew the line under it he said no i'm just gonna tell you now i can't do it and I think he deserves credit for it, to be honest. Unless the two of you agree, because like Cole and Zeneb, apparently... Oh, talk about a fucking car crash. ...according to Cole, had agreed they were going to be a no at the altar, but they did it together before they, you know, before the, even the bachelor parties, I think, you know, away from the cameras. The problem was that Cole and Zeneb, when they were at the altar, Zeneb really went after him. Yeah, she fucking crucified him. That is why you never let the narcissist in on the fact that you're going to say no to them because they'll get the jump on you and they will do what Zanab did to go, which is fucking emasculate him. I mean, that was hard to watch. That really was. And Cole, a good guy, either a normal or an empath. I would say probably a normal. Cole was never saying yes. No. He, he kind of saw through Zanab and she was so passive aggressive. <laughs> You know, Zana was a fucking disaster. Chelsea is a, a saint next to fucking Zana. And Cole was blindsided and hurt by that from, I think, my understanding of the situation because he thought that it would just be a, a kind I'm no, you know, like, no, I'm not really feeling it or no, I, I don't feel like we're a good match or no, I'm not really ready, whatever. But she went on a whole rant about him and said some you know pretty awful things they could be all true maybe it's all worth no they're not all true this is why i fucking don't like dr Kirk at times because he's so indecisive you know mealy mouth oh, they could all be true oh, i don't know oh, it could be true it might be true it might not be true we saw enough of cole to know that it's not true cole is a decent guy he really is you know cole really did nothing wrong you know, but come on, Dr. Kirk, this is where you fucking let me down. This is where you let down your whole audience. Oh, it could be true. It might be true. I don't know. Just back. Fuck off, man. No. I know. But anyway, wow. 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 I can't. Well, let's see what he says. We're so bad. Mm -hmm. What? I don't want to go to the altar. I can't.
I'd like to think that he... And Chelsea's kind of not surprised by this. She kind of expected it, I think. He said something there. <laughs> and he gave some explanation instead of like just ending it. He, he, has, he does have a tendency to be brief when he is in a, a tense situation like with Jessica. He t well, you just have to pull off the band-aid at some point as the Axie or you know, pull off the plaster. At some point, you just have to level with people and just say, I'm not going to do it. Sorry. Tended to do that. He doesn't tend to do that with Chelsea as much, but. So. Yeah, Jimmy's a wee bit wishy washy, to be honest, you know. And I could be like that myself sometimes. It's never a good thing to hurt people's feelings. It's never something that you look forward to doing, you, you, you know, as a normal human. You don't want to hurt people's feelings. But in the end, you have to tell them the truth. If you don't want to marry them, you just have to say it. Oh, look. I like you and all that, but I'm not going to marry you. Sorry. You know, it's not going to work. And everyone can see that this is not a healthy relationship. It's not a healthy dynamic. Yeah, they would be miserable together. It'd be a very toxic marriage. He's done the right thing. So is that, but there's, there's a possibility they edited that out for dramatic effect. I would like to think that he said something there. <laughs> but anyway, let's watch. Okay. I mean, you'd like to think he says something. You heard what he fucking said. What are you all about? Okay. Um. Well, now it's starting to look like he he didn't say anything because he's not. Unless he said a whole. Dr. Kirk, what the fuck are you fucking on about? You heard what he fucking said. We all heard it. Bunch of things, and then now it's. What about fucking try to read it? It's not even fucking there. For time to. But yeah, I mean, so if we just go off the edit, if that's how we said it, my God, Jimmy, like, say something more. Well, what, do, what, what do you fucking want him to say? You want, want him to marry this? This, you know, it's not, it's not a good relationship. They're, they're not good for each other. What, what, do you, what do you want him to fucking say, Dr. Kirk? Honestly, do you want him to keep fighting like we've seen? The first fight, the second fight, the third fight, and God only knows what's happened off camera. You want that to continue? You think that's a good dynamic? I mean, come on. Or, like, I'm sorry? <laughs> for what? Telling the fucking truth? What is he fucking sorry for? Or, I want a date after? Or, which. No, he doesn't. It doesn't seem like that's what he's saying because he's just. On the reunion, that's confirmed, by the way, if you watch it. Hanging her out to dry. Hanging her out to dry. How the fuck is he hanging her out to dry? He sat down. Gave her a good day and told her the truth. He literally did nothing wrong. He's never done anything wrong this whole way through, except maybe, you know, drag her along a wee bit to an extent. But he's tried his best every step of the way. He gave her chance after chance after chance after chance. And she was the one who fucking blew it. No him. All right. So then he fucking start with me. All right. So say something. I mean, if you're breaking up with her, okay. But. But he said his part. He do, He just has to wait now for her to respond. What is he supposed to fucking say? He said what he wanted to say. He has to wait for her to say something back. Give it a little bit more effort. Like what? What is he meant to say? She's a narcissist. You can't have good relationships with folk like that. It's unfortunate. And it's not really our fault. It all happened, you know, a long time ago. But it's not his responsibility to save her. I can anyway, so. He did the same with Jess, and I think he has a problem with guilt. I think he was... Maybe, yeah, because he has emotional empathy. He's a normal. Maybe made to feel guilty. Uh, people who are avoidant sometimes are made to... Yeah, I would agree that Jimmy is a bit avoidant, to be honest. But I think that's why a lot of people don't really like him that much. Because, you know, you could argue that he should have been more straight with Chelsea earlier on. But as I said, how are you supposed to do that? Remembering that there's all these cameras around and it's just going out to the world, like the Truman Show. You know, you do have to remember that when you're in that position, the cameras are watching you and they're recording you and social media, you know. You feel guilty because they will resort to distance and when they are threatened, they will shut down. And even with their parents, they can be yelled at about that or something like show that you care or be more considerate. This is an empath. 
absolutely 101 this is an empath talking I don't think Jimmy at any point has shown any signs of not caring he obviously does care about Chelsea to an extent but he's not an empath at the same time you know what I mean it's, it's a different dynamic and then there's more of a shutdown and so it, there could be some kind of thing there for him because I think at least there's some minor indications of that. Anyway, so maybe maybe he is shutting down. But the other thing here is if I'm near the ballpark regarding her issues, the emotional turmoil and pain that she is experiencing right now, it can be again an empath physical for some of these people. It can be physical for all of us. You know, there's a reason why we say, oh, you're breaking my heart because it, it can feel and it can actually. Well, I've had panic attacks before. Have you ever had a panic attack? They're not fun. I can tell you that. feel painful, right? They feel like heart attacks. I mean, I remember one time I was in St. John's Hospital for six and a half hours getting checked up, you know, uh, because I thought I'd had a heart attack. That was an anxiety attack or a panic attack is another way to put it. They're not fun. You know, you're stabbing me in the heart or whatever. There's a reason why we have those metaphors and those phrases. And for people with what I think her condition is, that there could be just overwhelming pain right now. So I, I, I'm worried about her. The other day with the rest of the guys and the rest of the... I get all that, but what's he meant to do at the end of the day? If he doesn't want to be with her, then he just has to fucking tell her. Look... We had a great time. Uh, I think you're a lovely person, etc. But you know, I'm not going to marry you. Would it be better to drag her in front of the altar, in front of the world, and say, "I love you to death, but I'm not going to marry you"? Would that be preferable? Would that be better? There's no easy way out of this for Jimmy. The couples. You've said it like literally three times since then about Amy and Johnny being the strongest twice, couple. And I said it because we were working through some. Okay, I'll, I'll wait, but. This is interesting that he's bringing this up. Uh, 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 let's see what he says. Things and I thought that we have, and for you to just sit here and tell me that you're not going, like you're set, I'm not going, right? Am I getting that? You're set, I'm not going. I'm set, I'm not going. That's all he has to say. <laughs> just yeah. what's he meant to fucking see? I didn't want to do it. Doesn't want to do it. And she kind of interrupted, not terribly but he was only halfway through you know the other day two or three times at the at the lake party you said that amy and johnny were the best couple uh huh and he he did indicate well they are in this season that he was hurt my best guess is that and this is pretty bad of me to guess but that he was either subconsciously or consciously ambivalent and conflicted about marrying her at that point. And he's never going to marry her. Come on now. See, this is Dr. Kirk. He's so bad at reading between the lines. It really is. He takes people at face value way too much. I mean, we all have our flaws and our weaknesses. That's what it is. He takes people at face value far too much. He doesn't know how to read between the lines. And uh, I guess you could argue after chatting with Jess, it could have affected him again, subconsciously or consciously. And no, it just had nothing to do with it. He was never, listen, Jimmy was never going to go for Jess either because Jess was a neurotic pain in the fucking arse and a total egomaniac. Uh, she was full of herself. Uh, didn't it didn't matter that Jess looked like what she looked like. And Jess was a very good looking woman. But the thing is, you know, Jimmy knew her before he knew what she looked like. <laughs> so Jimmy was never going to go for Jess, ever. No way. Because well, just go back and watch their interactions. And the, you're going to need your EpiPen because I'm, you know, you're not going to be able to breathe because I'm so good looking. Nah, 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 nah. Jimmy's not fucking stupid is looking for something to point to, to say, well, you made this mistake, and so it's, it's not my fault that I'm leaving you, that kind of thing. Well, it pretty much has been entirely her fault. <laughs> Look at all the fights. She started every single one of them. I mean, he wouldn't have to look very far for... It's not really hard to find out who's in the wrong when you're dealing with a narcissist and a normal. <laughs> That's no really 
a hard one to figure out. <laughs> something to use along those lines. I mean, their last fight, there were so many things. Like he could say, you straight up lied to me a, a number of times during that fight. See what I mean? Fight that you hurt. Brought, you know, his ex-lover into it against his wishes. You know, he said off camera, don't bring this up. And she fucking brought it up because as usual, narcissists will violate your boundaries and your, you know, they, they, they lack boundary recognition. They'll bring anything up to assert control. Heard that Jess was there and Jess was not there. You just lied to me. as a Yeah, delusion, magical thinking, paranoia, victim mentality, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. A way to try to manipulate me or I don't know. So well, that's what they do. He could, there's a lot of things he could dig for if he really wanted to. What do you want him to do that? Point score on national TV and just make it worse for himself and for her? Or would you rather he just kept it brief and walked away? You tell me, Dr. Kirk. So I'm guessing we're not going to get more, much more detail, but why are you, we, we want drama out of this? I think what he's trying to say is that hurt me so bad. So I now don't want to be with you or. He's saying you highlighted something that is very true. As I said the last time, the less you say, the better. Just keep it brief with a narcissist. I don't want to marry you. I'm not going to go to the altar. Have a nice life. Goodbye. That's it. What the fuck do you want me to fucking do? I mean, seriously. Which I now... Fucking pissing me off now. Realize is true. Or you revealed... I think maybe this is what he's saying. You revealed that you don't actually think of us as strong which is clear but it's all the babble he's talking with a pish here what, what, what are you fucking going on about and therefore it means you don't really have strong feelings for me because if you had strong feelings for me you wouldn't say we weren't as strong of a couple but i think chelsea all she was saying in that moment was there's zero hesitation from anyone that would say that this couple is a good couple. There, there's like no problems and they're so... Are we still going on about Johnny and Amy? What does this have to do with anything? This is a little pish. Oh, in love with each other. <laughs> they're a strong couple. We fight. AD and Clay have their issues. Clay was never going to marry AD, by the way. It was never going to happen. Amy and Johnny have no issues. And they're... Clay's very similar to Bartis in that way. See, a lot of chemistry. So they're the strongest couple. You know, um, but what, what is he saying? Why did you propose to me? I feel like you weren't even trying to get married. I you don't think I was trying to get married. Yeah. Uh, I just wish he would say something more. <laughs> but again, what's it meant to say? She ruined it every single step of the fucking way with a neuroticism and a narcissism. Just nag, nag, nag. Just uh, a person can only take so much. It looks like. He's breaking up with her. Yeah, he is. Uh, if he's not breaking up with her, my God, Jimmy. What? Because <laughs> I'm thinking, is he saying, let's date? What, what, I'm going to like a 20-page diatribe or something like that. No, no, just keep it brief. It's all this shit, honestly. What is he fucking going on about? But if it, 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 all point, all things are pointing to them breaking up. That's so interesting. Yeah. So if they don't make it to the altar, another... If they don't make it to the altar, are you fucking paying attention? He just said to her, I want to break up. I didn't want to go to the fucking altar. I don't know how he can make it any fucking clearer for you. They're seasoned with hardly anyone going to the altar, which is fine. So <laughs> we uh, have her saying things that typically will happen for anyone when they're being dumped. Uh, you never loved me. You manipulate. Yeah, these are the words of a narcissist. Absolutes, you know, only a Sith deals in absolutes. No, only a narcissist deals in absolutes. Get it right. Related to me, that, that whole kind of thing. And it's very important, as I've said many times, that when you're breaking up with someone and they start. That is a sign of a narcissist, by the way. Absolute language. You never, you always, blah, blah, blah. That's a major sign of a narcissist that you're dealing with one. Thinking that, and sometimes you want to get ahead of that in, just in case they are thinking it, not indicating to you that that is not the case because that is. It's going to be hurtful to be dumped anyway, but it is double. Yeah, it is, but you better just to rip off the band-aid, you know, uh, just go on with it. It's really hurtful for the, the dump E to have a narrative that they were never loved, that they were manipulated the whole time. Well, that is how they will 
process it in their head and try and assert control over you because remember when you're dealing with narcissists you're dealing with the need for control time there's so many bad lessons that can be learned from that false narrative and it's normal to think that way it's like if you really mm, no it's not it's not it's normal for a narcissist to think that way it's not normal for a normal to think that way or for an empath to think that way as for a narcissistic i don't know but it's only totally shame mate sorry really loved me we wouldn't be here right now but you know we all understand that love comes and goes it it, it does some people think it can't because true love doesn't do that but that's just a well it depends on who your true love is with you know empath normal narcissistic or narcissist again he doesn't make that distinction almost like a religious supernatural belief love is so many things it it's a behavior it's a mindset it's a feeling it's a compulsion it's an attraction it's a spiritual well that's where you have to distinguish between limitance and love limitance is a fancy word for infatuation or to fancy someone you know um there's a big difference there but love is something entirely different duty whatever there's a lot of different meanings and things to focus on but uh, love can be the most in you know someone can be the most in love they've ever been and have it be legit and healthy and non-problematic and over time for whatever reason even if it's not conflictual it just fades sometimes that that happens uh, we don't know why that's why there are so many poems and so many songs and as hg says so often and he said this many times on his channel when you talk about poems and love songs and movies and tv shows about love it is inevitably narcissists who are behind them as i say check out hg's channel he goes into all of this and so many movies and yeah the thing is when you're watching a movie what you have to remember is you're watching a movie <laughs> you're not dealing with real life like um he's just not that into you that was a movie i saw years ago uh, things like that you know infatuation is just it hurts while you're in it but it does move on you, you do get past it kind of thing you remember all things are temporary in life but you know when you're dealing with romance novels you know when you're dealing with tv shows and movies you're dealing with exactly that don't confuse it for real life because real life is not the same thing and so many reality tv shows that concern with love that are can you know tell stories that's not really love though that's more like drama to be honest praise of love because we're fascinated by it we're uh, uh yeah, oriented no empaths are i'm not really to be honest i i kind of see through this a lot better i think than dr kirk does because he's in love with the idea of in love if that makes sense he's in love with the romantic notion but in the end that's a lot of pish that way as humans we're very concerned with this so no as empaths you mean mate don't confuse you for me in that regard it's it's complicated and um so i hope that he disabuses her of that notion i expect this right now we we're just picking our songs for walking into the fucking reception are you kidding me why did you treat me like you did today we had the best day today why to let you off on a high note chelsea fucking obviously because he knew he was going to get rid of you but he wanted to give you a good memory that would be my assumption because if i was in jimmy's position that's what i'd be thinking you know why don't you tell me then why did you waste my time coming here because you just wanted to do yeah it's a viable question no it's pretty easy to see why he did it and because i do have a degree of emotional empathy the it's a frequent question that'll come up and i think given what i know about the situation what would have been good for Chelsea is if he broke up with her before they did all this. He could have thought, well, he oh, in front of all the cameras with the whole world watching and social media being what it is. I right, sure. He might as well have just stretched his own rope if he did that. He wanted to have one last fun interaction, but that can feel really manipulative. No, it can't. fuck off, man. You told the fucking pish, man. And really hurtful. And it rewrites that whole story it's like wait so this whole time i've been humiliating myself and no she's been fucking humiliating him if you've been paying attention to the fucking fights 
loving you and kissing you. And I, and I just, you just asked me and I just got done telling you, I do want to marry you. You led me on this whole time and you knew this whole time you were going to break up with me. Like, yes, because you wanted to let her off on a high note. How is that hard to understand? Uh, why <laughs> did you do? Why? Because she was a neurotic fucking mess. Because he's a narcissist. Because you can't have a healthy relationship with them. How is this? Have you been paying attention to me at all? To any of this? Do that. Yeah. Now, in real life, because this doesn't usually happen, um, I don't know if you can hear that air blower. That it, it... <sighs> Here we go. <laughs> this episode of Dr. Kirk's Personal Life is brought to you by Love is Blind. I've seen this video earlier on, so I know what's coming. That, mm, uh, I have someone in our neighborhood that is using that air blower constantly. And we're in... I had kind of a similar thing. I used to have... Uh, I used to go live all over the world at one time. And I used to feel like there was a guy following me around with a fucking drill. No matter where I went, it was fucking everywhere. And it was constant. This drilling into the ceiling, drilling out of the wall. It used to drive me off my fucking head. So I know what he's on about, man. It's, it's unpleasant, like. I'll just let this play out because it's actually quite funny. Spring. There's no leaves. Leaves have already fallen months ago. What are you possibly blowing? <laughs> I've gone down there before. And I've, I, I've, I've confronted some of the, uh, the people that... So, Dr. Kirk, I think you just need to go down and bar them. I do this. I'm like, it, it's what's... Because it's so loud and so long. When I use an, a blower, five minutes, six minutes... Some of these people, there, there was one guy. He was blowing. The, I don't know. I don't need to know about what your neighbors are blowing, mate. <laughs> you can keep that to yourself. Actually, a, a, a you know, like a landscaper, and it, it was one of those those old style roofs, you know, with the shingles and all the, you know, it's like actual wood. I don't know if, what they call it, but there's a lot of places where little bits of leaves can get stuck in. I get it. I've had roofs like that before with moss and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, if you sit there for 45 minutes blasting one shingle with your blower, eventually those little bits are going to come out. But you, you got to bend over and just pick it out with your hand or use like a rake or a broom or something. That's what I learned. It's much faster and it's a lot less noisy and takes a lot less time and better for the environment. Did I say it's faster and it takes less time? <laughs> I don't yeah, know. you did. Anyway, it's bugging me. It's getting louder. I feel like they're getting closer to the house. I just want to... No, I know what it means, though. I mean, it's fucking annoying, isn't it? You just try to sit there and think about things and relax and just do your work and all this. And then... Fuck's sake, here we fucking go. Let's say... Oh. Oh, I thought it stopped. No. It particularly drives my wife nuts because she's closer to that side of the house. And um, <laughs> this conversation is putting me in a bad mood. Uh, well, he's an empath. What do you expect? Um, anyway, uh, yeah. So in the real world, typically, this will also be another reaction from people. And they'll say, like, when did, it, why didn't you tell me? last month or why didn't you tell me three months ago because of the cameras now some people can avoid and will avoid they will put it off i think jeremy yeah yep yeah, yep yeah, that is that is jimmy 100 percent. he's avoidant he might have actually done that so that does happen and it's that's very aggravating it's very immoral to me by the way um when it comes to laura and jeremy as far as I'm concerned, they're both pieces of trash. I don't have any respect for either of those two. Better just to forget about them completely. I, I think they're both garbage, to be honest. Jeremy was sneaky, man. The way he did it was like so fucking cowardly and weaselly. I mean, you think maybe Jimmy's a wee bit like that, but fucking Jeremy's way worse. And Laura was a fucking neurotic pain in the arse. You're basically lying by omission about something. She went on and on and on about his fucking Hawaiian shirt. I'm like, Really? Is this like a big fucking deal? Because he likes Hawaiian shirts. You're just going to... See, that's very, very important. So that does happen. But 
uh, a lot of times what can happen is that people will have a strong feeling of wanting to break up and a strong feeling of not wanting to break up. And I believe that's called ambivalence. Both exist or they vacillate often between the two. Well, no, there's no vacillation on Jimmy's part. He was never mad at you. And it's normal to want to make sure, right? You might even have a couple months. This is what I mean. As an empath, he does not know how to read between the lines. He takes people at face value. You're like, yes, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. But if you've been together for 10, 20 years, you have kids together. Well, thank Christ. Thank the fucking Lord that they have not been together for 10 years because Jimmy's hair would be completely gray and he'd have wrinkles and <laughs> he'd have a walking stick. She would completely break him down over the course of 10 years. Jimmy would be unrecognizable if he'd been with, with Chelsea for 10 years. You don't want to just impulsively, and some might consider that impulsive. You have two bad months and you're just like, you're done already. You know, so you want to give it some time. And if you don't have the relationship where you can really talk about that openly, which could be part of the problem to begin with, then you know it can be hard. And so there's a lot of waiting and seeing and putting off and reevaluating and trying. No, that's just you, mate, to be honest. Other things and or just not wanting to think about it, right? So that can happen. And I and I think that, that that's okay for people to do. And best case scenario, there are explicit conversations in couple therapy or outside where there's at least some indication from the partner that wants to break up or is thinking about it. At the very least, they have some major issues that they want to change in the relationship. They don't have to say, look, this has to change or I'm going to divorce you. But it, it has to be like, look, I'm kind of struggling in the relationship right now. And I, I, let's talk about it, that kind of thing. So you would hope that would happen. So even if you do that, sometimes the person being broken up with will write the story that they were being manipulated over the past few months. Revision of history. When they... Affect the mentality, paranoia. That's going too far sometimes. In this situation, yeah, if he's that sure, it sounds like he's been sure for a while. I don't Agreed. Absolutely. He has. I don't know how long. He might have been very sure after that first, after that fight that they had last. I don't know. Let, let's see what he... I don't know. I do know. Yes, he was. And this is where he's so wishy-washy. Fuck all that. Just fucking say it, he says. He's not saying much, which is uh, uh, not helpful. Do this? The only opportunity is to... By the way, Dr. Kirk, he looks a lot better in that black shirt and and the white bow tie than that pink shirt. That pink shirt is fucking horrendous. But anyway. Tell you when I feel it. I feel like you've known you were going to say no this entire time and you just wasted my time. You told me... She's not entirely wrong, though, to be honest. She's not wrong. He was never going to say yes. And the creature knew it. Two weeks ago that you thought that I didn't love you? I think they're editing it, but anyway, he says, I basically, I'm not going to sit. Did it stop? No. Is he still on about the fucking leaf blower? Fucking hell. No, oh, it's still going. Um, he's saying, I, I'm not going to take the soundproof your studio, mate. <laughs> people are annoying, and people are all around you, so you're going to have to find a, a way to deal with it tell you I don't want to be with you until I feel it. So I think what he's no, just babble. trying to say is that he just came to this realization. It's possible. No, I didn't. No. Possible? It is no. possible. It's no. not likely. Because no, you know better than that, mate. Come on. Because they've had a good day, it sounds like. So what's the thing? Now, maybe for him, he's like, okay, I'm going to have a really good day. And if I feel the spark and the magic, then... I won't uh, be. I won't break up with her. But for one last chance, you know, actually, I can hear the leaf blowing out. <laughs> most possible. Then say that if that whatever it is, Jimmy, <laughs> say it. And then I took a step back and said, "I'm willing to try because I love you that much." Like I love you. I love you too. When you, know it doesn't. I think he feels sorry for her. Not enough. I'm not saying I don't. I'm That's saying. I'm not saying that it's, I love you. I, I think the world of you. Okay. Uh, I think what he's saying is, I love you and I don't want to marry you. That, so I hope Jimmy's pretty clear about that, if that's true. I was so optimistic when I started this process that if I put myself out there 
I would find my person. That led me to you. That's. Mm, I think the first part of that is true. When he went on the show, that is what he was thinking. But the whole Megan Fox thing as well, that doesn't really go in our favor. The greatest thing I've ever done single-handedly. It was hard, but it was the greatest thing I've ever done. And before that damn argument, I was so sick. Oh gosh, Kate. I like you telling largely the truth here. Before the argument started, it was like, okay, she's not making a fox, but you know, I fell in love with her personality. She seemed like a, a cool girl, laid back, chilled in the pods. You know, maybe we can make this work. She's not terrible looking. You know, Chelsea's actually pretty good looking, but you know, after the after the fights kicked off, he's just like, no, this is this is done. Okay, so it sounds like he's saying that that big fight was... I don't think he's completely being dishonest, in my opinion. It's the kicker for him, which, yeah, yeah. makes sense. Yep. yep, exactly. And I think Chelsea could have a legitimate gripe saying, well, then why not tell me right after the fight? I'm guessing for him, he wanted some more time to make sure he wanted to talk it over with someone or something. And if that's true, then say something. But at the very least, it, I don't think very many people would fault someone for telling them a week later when they seem pretty sure of it. You know, that, that you just think you would do it before you have this nice date and then you bait her by asking her, do you, Come on, that's unfair. Do you want to marry me? And she's like, basically, yes. And then. He's like, well, I don't want to marry you. Were you lying to me before you did? I could have handled it better. In all honesty, he, he could have. He could have done it better. But is there an easy way to do this? I mean, really, is there an easy way? Is there a way? In my peace. They just called me clingy before you did everything to me that I've gone through. The Well, by the way, remember what I said before about they never let anything go? How she's bringing up now? Weeks later, you call me clingy, you call me clingy. Again, they never let anything go. Told you that. Ring her for, for you. I'm like walking on eggshells with you. I can't tell you. It's the other way around. He's walking on eggshells around her. I tell you things that hurt my feelings because you... But that's projection, which is very common with narcissists. You get so upset. Uh, uh, I don't need to... I hope I don't... So I don't know what y'all's reaction is y'all why does he keep saying y'all is to this couple or my react i don't know what your reaction is. <laughs> that's quite funny because when hg does uh let's all laugh at the the sugars <laughs> that's one of the things he loves to pick up on <laughs> y'all 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 <laughs> the comments this to my reaction to them so uh, I look at you right now thinking, figuring that you you see it too, but I can never know. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. Thanks very much for watching and uh, hope you've enjoyed this analysis. My God, what a bad hair day. <laughs> but a wee bit longer this time because like, I think this is the last one he's done or he's going to do on uh, Jimmy and Chelsea unless he does the reunion. I'll react to that as well.